Hi, my name is Leah and I'm an educator with the National World War II Museum. Thank you so much for joining us today for part one of our three-part series on overlooked but influential innovators and scientists from World War II. For the next three weeks, we will be hearing from students like you as they tell us the stories of scientists um, and innovators from World War II. Um, the list of amazing things that these women have contributed is basically endless, and yet you've probably never heard of them. Um, many of the things that they invented or discovered are still important today. If you've ever been to a hospital or looked through a windshield, then you've probably interacted with something that one of these women did. Each story is going to be followed by something that you can try at home. Um, whether it's blowing gigantic bubbles, practicing your detective skills by learning how to spot fake handwriting, um, or using the radiation from the sun to create cool art. Um, today we're going to learn about a woman named Catherine Burr Blodgett. Um, a student named Lana is going to tell us a little bit about her life. Um, and then we're going to learn how to make our own bubble viewer and see if we can predict when bubbles are going to pop. All right, let's hear from Lana. Hi, my name is Lana. I'm a brownie from River Ridge. Did you know that bubbles will change colors depending on their thickness? Did you know that the woman who discovered this also used her knowledge of thin films to save countless lives during World War II? Catherine Burr Bulgett was a physicist, a chemist, and a, an inventor with eight patents on her name. She was the first woman to get a PhD in physics from Cambridge University and the first woman to be hired at the General, General Electric. One day she noticed that soap bubbles became different colors and discovered that whenever a soap bubble changed color, it meant it was a different thickness. Prior to this discovery, the best instruments could only measure within a few thousandths of an inch. Catherine developed a color gauge that allowed scientists and engineers to simply match colors of a coating to measure the thickness of that coating within one millionth of an inch. She spent most of her time studying these very thin coatings. They are called monomolecular films, or very, very thin substances that coat the surface of other things. Her most famous invention is what's called invisible glass, a coating on glass that cuts down on the reflection that comes off of glass. This reflection affects how well you can see through it and can be a safety issue on windshields. The coating she invented has been improved upon since the 1940s, but it is still used on computer screens, camera lenses, car windshields, eyeglasses, and countless other things. The first movie to use her invisible glass in its lens was Gone to with the Wind. This movie came out in 1939 and was known for its crystal clear cinematography for that time, of course. During double World War II, her invisible glass was put to use on submarine periscopes and airplane and spy cameras, but her life-saving inventions did not stop there. Her knowledge of coatings helped to de-ice airplane wings, which allowed pilots to fly in conditions that had previously been too dangerous to even attempt. When she was in school, she studied the effectiveness of charcoal in capturing poisonous gases and worked to design even more effective gas masks that saved thousands of lives during the war. She also developed a machine to protect soldiers in combat that created larger and longer lasting smoke screens by vaporizing oil. This device helped save thousands of lives in Italy and North Africa during the war. When she wasn't saving lives or studying bubbles, this chemist loved exploring her creative side through writing silly poems and acting in plays. She also was an active conservationist and an amateur astronomer. Cool, that sounds dirty. Yeah, dirty like this table. Have you been doing science experiments here again? All right, thank you so much, Lana. Um, I can't believe all the things that Catherine invented and discovered. Um, if you've ever looked through a windshield or worn glasses or looked at a screen, then you've experienced Catherine's invisible glass. And who knew that she was responsible for a new type of gas mask that was used during World War II that was able to save more lives. And she also developed that um, new and improved smoke screen that was able to keep people covered over the battlefield um, for a longer amount of time. 
pretty incredible. So as we learned from Lay and I, Catherine Blodgett also discovered that when you add films to a surface, they're gonna change color depending on the thickness of that film. So that's sort of like when you look at a rainbow in a puddle in the city and maybe it has some oil on it um, and you see a rainbow in it. So it's sort of that thin sheen that's on top of the water that's making that rainbow. So Catherine was able to develop a gauge that would allow people to determine the thickness of a film down to a millionth of an inch. So not only was her process simple and cheap, but it was also very, very accurate. So we're gonna try an experiment here today and we're gonna see if we can see bubbles change color as they grow and expand. Um, we have a guide that we're gonna take a look at that's gonna help us gauge how big our bubble or how thick our bubbles are. So again, this is gonna be a rough guide. Um, the colors that you're gonna be seeing are gonna be dependent on things like the light, um, the angle of the light, the quality of the light. It's gonna depend on what type of soap you use and things like that. Um, but you'll get the general idea from what we're looking at. So let's take a look at our guide. Okay, so here is our guide. As you can see, it's kind of um, a pattern of repeating rainbows. Um, so if we look over here, this pink area, that's gonna be our thicker, um, our thicker soap bubbles, all the way down to this zero down here where it turns white and black. So when it's kind of losing its color, that's how you can tell when the bubble is about to pop. So we're measuring this, our unit of measure here is nanometers, and M stands for nanometers. So what is a nanometer? A nanometer is very tiny. So a nanometer is actually only one millionth of a millimeter. So to give you a sense of how big a nanometer is, one strand of hair is actually 75,000 nanometers. And a red blood cell is between 6,000 and 8,000 nanometers. So we're working with some really, really small numbers here. Um, so on this scale, we're gonna be able to measure within a millionth of a millimeter. Um, when Catherine was measuring, she was only able to do it within about a millionth of an inch but that was still a thousand times better than anything that had previously been made. And it didn't require any fancy equipment. It was cheap, it was accurate, and it was easy to use. So looking at our scale here, you, as I was mentioning before, you can kind of see this pattern of rainbows. So we're gonna see if we can identify and observe that in the bubbles that we're gonna work with today. And we're gonna see if we can tell um, when it's maybe gonna be about to pop. So when you're looking at your bubbles, when you're blowing your bubbles up, um, keep an eye, you're going to be looking at kind of the perimeter of the bubble and see if you can tell when it kind of loses its color. So all we need to do, all we need for um, a bubble viewing <laughs> apparatus is we just need a, um, a flashlight and we need a um, clear plastic lid. So this is just a lid, so like a Pringles can. You're going to tape the lid to the top of the flashlight um, and you'll turn it on. So what I'm gonna do, oh, you also need your bubble juice. So this is just dish soap and water mixed together. And then you'll need a straw to blow up your bubble. So you're just gonna take your juice and you're gonna pour it onto the lid here. Now I've moved rooms because it's easier to see your bubbles against a dark backdrop here. You're gonna be able to see the colors much better. So you're gonna take your straw and you're going to dip it in the liquid and you're going to try and blow up a bubble. So let's see what we can do. All right, so now I have a nice big bubble here. So can you guys see, um, I'm going to stop my screen here, but all right. Okay, so can you guys see sort of this rainbow of colors here? It's, you know, it's switching between your, your, your pinks and your greens and your blues. So it's cycling through that rainbow. Um, so that's going to be kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about those colors. And then if you look at the top up here, that's going to be kind of what indicates the thickness. So we're, I'm going to try and blow it up super big and we're going to watch how the colors change. And we're going to see if we can get it to stay really thick. Nope, nope. Okay, I'm going to blow up another one. So as you can see, it kind of changes colors as it gets bigger and bigger. It kind of rotates through that rainbow of colors. And then when it gets super, super big around the edges, you'll see it start to get dark. 
Um, when you do it um, at home, you can try and do it in a dark room. You'll be able to see those colors and you'll actually see the light around you change colors as the um, bubble gets bigger and bigger. It's pretty cool. It's hard to show on this um, video screen. It's not super high quality, but when you're at home, you can either put like a black piece of paper behind your bubbles or go into the bathroom or something, turn off the lights and um, try to blow your bubbles and try and see if you can see really clearly the, um, the colors that your bubbles make and see if you can predict before your bubbles pop. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Um, come back and join us again next week, same time, same place, um, as we learn about Bessie Blount, a woman who learned how to write with her teeth and feet and then taught soldiers who lost their limbs during World War II how to do the same. All right, see you next time.